Well, I am very excited to have Charlotte Crowther, who's a very good friend and also a collaborator and the founder of an amazing tool called My Snapshot. Now, My Snapshot has been one of the biggest game changers for breakthrough facilitation. So I'm very excited to have Charlotte here. So the exciting thing about this conversation is that, you know, you and I work together to develop the virtual facilitator coefficient. We developed a model and the, we identified the components and the subcomponents. And that's what people, you know, kind of use in their, in their virtual facilitator co coefficient tool. But the exciting thing is that you are also alumni of the very first cohort of breakthrough facilitation. So you, you filled out the coefficient for, um, for the, the breakthrough facilitation course. You filled it out at the end and you also just now filled it out like kind of two years after doing the course. So I was hoping that we could take a look at your coefficient as kind of a real live example of how you see pull apart and get a deeper understanding of your skills progress in, in a skill like facilitation. Thanks. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Um, I'd be curious what you think as well. I'm sure I'll learn <laughs> from, this, <laughs> from this conversation too. Um, should, we, should we pull it up on the screen? Would that be, would that be helpful? Yeah. So as you can see, um, so kind of 54%. Um, and yeah, you, you can see it's kind of heavy, um, like strong on, on the left-hand side of, of the radar chart. Um, and that's speaking to the connects and the guide pillars. And that makes sense to me because I was a coach for 10 years and I have skills in creating safety, having purpose, being community, encouraging people to participate. Um, although it's that was predominantly at a one one to one level, like that. Um, I mean, I did do group uh, work too. Um, so it was, there were strong skills, but it was still like new for me to regularly do that at a group level, whereas before it was regularly at a one-to-one at -one level. And then with, with guide, uh, listening, questions, presence, flexibility, these are very trained skills for me. So it, it got clear for me that, that my uh, lack of a competency in design and prepare were 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 significant and they are i mean they are seriously kind of low low scores you know for my baseline um and that that was what created the lack of confidence that i had with facilitation so i got that super clear mm -hmm. thing thankfully so i was able to really double down on that and i like to be relatively modest um, so you'll see at the end of the cohort that, you know, those skills have improved a bit, but I, I was quite clear kind of, you know, in my, in my notes when I self-reflect that it was great to have greater comprehension of how to design an, an experiential learning experience, but um, I needed more practice. It did improve a lot at technology because I am good with technology. So, you know, it was good to kind of get clearer on that you know, and within the space of facilitation. So that, you know, I think that's what really moved the needle, um, you know, between kind of those, those first two scores that, that, I, that I had, yeah, between the 54 and a 66%. And the latest scores, which is, which I'm really, I'm really excited about. I, I did this uh, today and I was like, oh shoot, I hope it's higher. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't look at my report before, so I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna be really honest with myself and just see. Um, and I'm so relieved <laughs> that I have improved. And it's in the areas where, yeah, in the areas of design and prepare where I have given a number of sessions. I think the one I'm, I'm most proud of and excited by is the session I did um, uh, with Circle, with Mathilde and Emma um, at Circle on, on how to create the course content uh, for a community powered course. Um, back in I think October last year 2002 and um, I I know I, I put a lot of um, time into preparing it knowing I needed to do that knowing it yeah. was a new skill for me 
So I was excited. And that was important because I think before, because I wouldn't quite know what to do, I might have rushed it at the end. And then that would have reinforced the cycle of I'm not good at facilitating. Whereas it was like, okay, I know what to do. So I had the comprehension, but it was just the, the, the practice. So and and it went really well. I got some some great feedback. Um, it was really good fun. And I remember speaking to you often, you were like, you know, if it goes well, because you have that kind of buzz after. <laughs> And I was like, oh, good. Yeah, I got that buzz. That's phew. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should put that in the coefficient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So yeah, that, that's really made the, the difference. I, I would say kind of, you know, where I am kind of two years later. And and then speaking to the other side, the kind of connect and guide. I mean, yeah. it, sometimes it's a bit, it's like the same. Sometimes it's a bit lower. For me, like all I would say to that side is, um, it feels about the same. And if it is a bit lower, it's because I have more context about kind of the space for me to grow, you know, mm-hmm. a more comprehension of what's possible. So, you know, it might be like, you know, a point above, a point below. But for me, it's it, that's growing. Um, but it's nice. nice For me, it's actually reconfirming that it's kind of within the range. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, pumped. One of the things like with my snapshot, why we have rubrics. Mm-hmm. So that uh, when people score themselves, um, they they have more context of what good looks like, um, yeah. what what low performance uh, or low you know poor practice kind of looks like, and they can kind of see the spectrum. and And in and above itself, a rubric is is a great teaching tool and a learning tool.